In order to get traffic over 138th Street, right over here at the canal, there was a wooden bridge. And there was an injunction on the bridge. There was a sign that said that you could not cross the bridge at a pace faster than a walk. That was to make sure, of course, that the vibrations wouldn't cause the bridge to drop. Uh, in any event, the Mont Haven Canal caused no end of trouble after the city of New York took over this area. It was, in fact, an open sewer. Uh, to show you how bad it was, at one time there was even a dead horse that was discovered in it. So the city of New York, with the late 19th, early 20th centuries, moved to have the canal closed and filled in. And of course, the the part that came second, north of 138th Street, was the part that was filled in first. The second part was filled in later. And however, there still is one tiny remnant of the Mott Haven Canal that still exists, which we will get an opportunity to see later. All right? Excuse me? When was it called Haven? When was it called Haven? Uh, Jordan L. Mott purchased it in 1841. He was the guy who called it Mott Haven. It was hyphenated? Uh, no, it was not hyphenated. It was uh, two separate words, Mont Haven. Now, the next block over is Ryder Avenue, and Ryder Avenue is named after William E. Ryder, one of the two men who extended the canal northward to 144th Street. Okay, so now we're going to take a, uh, a walk to 3rd Avenue and see what's there. Okay. spectacular fire on that all right, here we are at the corner of 3rd Avenue and 138th Street. And 3rd Avenue itself, <coughs> it's uh, extremely historic. <coughs> Excuse me. 3rd Avenue was built in 1797. Uh, the guy who was the engineer was a fellow by the name of John B. Coles, but the idea for 3rd Avenue came from one of those Lewis Morrises. In this case, it was Lewis Morris, the signer of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, after the American Revolution, uh, there was devastation all over the place. Let's face it, this was a war zone. Uh, and he decided one way he could recoup his lagging, uh, his, his lagging fortunes was to divert traffic that went from New England to New York across the northern Bronx and over the King's Bridge in a more direct route further south. So he petitioned the state legislature to be able to build a bridge, uh, which is where the Third Avenue Bridge is today, and to build an approach road to it. And the approach road to that bridge is Third Avenue. Now, this eventually hooked up with the, Boston, the original Boston Post Road, and so Third Avenue at this point was originally called Boston Road, and of course at 163rd Street it veered off to where Boston Road is today. It was only later that Third Avenue got its current name, Third Avenue. Uh, to the north of 138th Street, you see a fluted column with an American eagle on it. It's one of the numerous World War I monuments that you find in almost every Bronx neighborhood. This is the World War monument that the people of Mott Haven erected. Uh, it has the names of the people from this neighborhood who died in World War I. And the whole thing is enclosed in an ornamental iron fence. And if you notice very carefully, uh, some of the uh, supporting uh, members of that fence have little axe handles on it. And that represents the fasces, uh, which is an ancient Roman symbol of authority. Uh, interestingly enough, of course, this, these monuments were erected in the late 1920s, early 1930s as a rule. Uh, and it wasn't until World War II that one of the enemies of the United States was Fascist Italy, which also used the fasces as its symbol and also was the origin of the name fascist. But nevertheless, there it is as a, uh, as a symbol of authority and power on the wrought iron fence. Uh, across the way, uh, you see a, um, uh, a public uh, housing development. Those are the John Puroy Mitchell houses. Uh, after World War II, uh, Robert Moses, who was in charge of slum clearance uh, for New York City, as well as being in charge of a half a million other things, uh, had plans to destroy all the buildings in New York City that he considered to be slum dwellings. And as far as he was concerned, anything that was a slum dwelling was one that was old. So he, uh, and Mott Haven being the oldest urbanized area of the Bronx was just filled with old buildings and he completely threw down a whole load of them and built a number of these uh, low-income public housing projects on the site. 
Uh, admittedly, the space was opened up, there was more trees and more grass, but the scale of the buildings were completely out of character with the neighborhood. Nevertheless, it was named after John Horroy Mitchell, who was a mayor of the city of New York, and he had the distinction of uh, resigning his oath office at the time that the United States got into World War I, uh, joining the armed forces, and unfortunately getting killed over there. Uh, nevertheless, the, uh, the development is named after him. Now, if you move well, just a few, uh, a few steps south. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, here on 137th Street and 3rd Avenue, if you look right across to the traffic aisle on the way, you find another column that's just standing there, a uh, pink granite column uh, that comes to a capital on the top with a round ball on it. It doesn't seem to mean anything. Um, oddly enough, this is one of the rarest kind of monuments you find in the Bronx. This is a monument to the Spanish-American War. All right? So here at the, uh, at the intersection, if you will, at 138th Street and 3rd Avenue, one block north and one block south, you have facing each other a World War I monument and a Spanish-American War monument. Uh, the building that is uh, directly across 137th Street from that monument uh, the one where the Chase Manhattan Bank has its uh, headquarters is the original building of the North Side Board of Trade. Uh, the cornerstone was laid by Mayor William Gaynor himself. Uh, the North Side Board of Trade was the very first businessman's group in the Bronx, and it started in the 1890s before the borough of the Bronx itself was created, hence the name North Side. The Bronx was called the North Side in common parlance before the, uh, the, the borough itself was created. You still have, for instance, the North Side Savings Bank in the Bronx, which still preserves the old name. So it was the North Side Board of Trade. After it became the borough of the Bronx, it changed its name to the Bronx Board of Trade. And this was its headquarters on, the, on 137th Street. And it shows you that at the time when the building was built, at that time in the early 20th century, how very strong a business area Mott Haven was that the premier business organization had to have its headquarters here. Eventually, the Bronx Board of Trade moved to 149th Street. Later on in the 1960s, it merged with the Bronx Chamber of Commerce. And today, the Bronx Chamber of Commerce and Bronx Board of Trade, which was at one time its official title, now has its headquarters on Fordham Road, which today is the largest commercial street in the Bronx. But this is where the start was, and this was the headquarters of the North Side Board of Trade, starting right here. All right, now we're going to move further down 3rd Avenue and go as far as we possibly can. What year was the building constructed? 1911. 1911. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's right. It's commerce, manufacture. Bye. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are standing now on 3rd Avenue, just at the shoreline of the Harlem River, although you cannot see it from here. These buildings, right over here, are the Mott Ironworks. This building stands, as far as we can determine, on the site of the Morrisania Manor House, where the Morrises lived. Jordan L. Mott purchased the land in 1841, built his ironworks here. He manufactured ornamental ironwork, such as fountains, and he also manufactured uh, practical things, such as sinks and stoves. As a matter of fact, Jordan L. Mott was also an inventor, and in the 19th century, he was considered to be a major inventor. He invented the coal-burning stove. Now, if you figure back in those days, uh, the only alternative was a wood-burning stove. This was considered to be a major advance. And at one time, uh, in the middle of the 19th century, there was an artist that painted a mythical group portrait of all the major American inventors, and right smack in the middle of the painting is Jordan L. Mott. That painting now hangs in the White House, and there's a copy of it as a mural on the back of the Great Hall of uh, Cooper Union. Uh, at one time, President James Buchanan is supposed to have considered Jordan L. Mott for the post as the head of the United States Patent Office, and supposedly he had turned it down. 
The ironworks expanded steadily on this site until 1906. In 1906,